So as the first wave of the COVID-19 pandemic spreads across the United States, where places like New York have passed their peak and are settling down, we're seeing surges of cases and new hot zones form in states in the South and the Southwest. Now, as we're seeing this resurgence of cases in these new states, we are again seeing this debate about mandatory face masks. Now, we saw these mandatory face mask policies in numerous countries abroad and in hot zone states such as New York City at the start of the pandemic. Now, there are ongoing questions about the true efficacy of these masks, about how mask wearing policies are infringement on our rights, and even some people claiming that wearing masks causes harm. Now, I asked myself, why is this such an upsurgence of this sort of anti-masker movement? And I get it. Since this pandemic started, there's been so many unknowns. There's been so much redirection and changing of recommendations. There's been very poor communication from our leadership and our healthcare organizations. So people are frustrated, they're fed up, and they question everything they hear. And they wanna seek out their own facts. So let's talk about this a little bit. Where is the evidence that public face mask wearing actually helps prevent the propagation of COVID? And it's true. The evidence is all over the place, right? There is, first of all, very low quality data in general. And depending on which camp you're on, if you're the pro-mask camp or the anti-mask camp, chances are you're gonna find some data out there that says masks may not do anything or masks may help. And the reality is we're never really gonna get high quality evidence to prove whether or not mask wearing to the public is going to definitively affect transmission of COVID. So we gotta analyze what we have to the best of our ability, balancing both the risks and the benefits. Now, I'm gonna to get to the evidence angle in a second, but for now, let's go over what we actually know for sure. One thing we certainly know about COVID, it is a rapidly spreading and very infectious virus. It spread across the world very quickly and made a lot of people sick and killed a lot of people. There is no debate about that. Secondly, we also know that there is an element of asymptomatic transmission. That is, there are people who are infected with the virus who either have not had symptoms yet or pre-symptomatic, or there are people who've gotten infected and may never have symptoms. And there's definitely a component of transmission that's occurring in that population. Finally, we know that contracting COVID-19 infection has to do with the concentration of viral exposure. That is, the viral load that you're exposed to will dictate whether or not you're gonna get infected or you're gonna get really sick or you're able to clear the virus without getting infected. We also know that the virus is transmitted primarily through respiratory droplets. That is, pieces of saliva and spit and mucosa from your nares, your mouth, where the virus will sort of hijack these particles and carry over to other people to infect them. There's also a component of aerosolization or airborne infection where the viral particles could potentially hang out in the air after someone's coughed or sneezed or even talked for a short period of time. So based on this, if we can reduce the concentration of viral particles transmitted through someone's oral and nasal cavities to other people, we could potentially reduce the rate of infection. But what exactly do we know about masks? Well, first of all, we've been wearing masks in the hospitals and during surgeries for a long time. And it has been proven time and time again that the masks are an effective barrier to prevent the transmission of infectious material. Now, even though they may not reduce it to zero, no matter what type of mask you wear, whether it's a cloth mask, a surgical mask, or even an N95, it can significantly reduce the spread and the distance of spread of viral particles from the wearer of the mask. There are several studies that have actually evaluated the efficacy of masks when a patient who has a potential virus is coughing and how much that viral particle will be expelled into the environment. And it showed that when you're wearing no mask versus a cloth mask versus a surgical mask, there is a sequential decline in the distance that the viral particles will, will travel and the concentration of those viral particles. So again, not zero, but it mitigates it. So based on what we know about the properties of the virus and how it's transmitted, the fact that face masks do provide some sort of a barrier for transmission and combine that with a little bit of common sense, it seems that wearing masks would be effective or at least provide some benefit, even if it's marginal. Then the question comes, do we actually have data that face masks would reduce the transmission of a virus during a pandemic or specifically in COVID-19? Now, whatever camp you're on, chances are you're gonna find some trial that either shows masks don't do anything or masks may do something. The trials are very heterogeneous. They're all around the map, mostly observational, low quality data. However, several of those studies do suggest a potential benefit. Now, I would argue even a potential benefit across a few trials is enough 
to implement such a policy if we think that it could be effective, especially when wearing masks does not have a lot of harm. Now, one study that caught my eye was recently published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. And what they did was they looked at Wuhan, China, Italy, and New York City in the United States. And what they did was plot out the rate of infections per day, and they sort of overlay that with when certain measures of mitigation were implemented, such as lock down the country, stay at home orders, and mask wearing. Now, if you look at these curves, if you look at Wuhan, as you can see, they had an early surge of infections, but they were able to flatten their rate very quickly. And again, over there, they had a lot of simultaneous aggressive measures, including quarantine, lockdown, contact tracing, mandatory masks, etc. Now, if we go further down and we see Italy and New York City, here we can see Italy where around March 5th when they started to surge, okay? And here, the first line is when lockdown occurred. Then you see the lockdown orders and still the curve persisted, okay? It was not until this sort of round black circle you see when face masks were made mandatory did you see the curve inflection start to occur. Now let's look at New York. In New York, again, similarly, they had social distancing orders followed by stay-at-home orders. Despite that, the curve persisted. And then when mandatory face coverings were ordered, you can finally see the curve then started to settle down. Next figure, this is plotting New York City versus the rest of the United States. Again, sort of showing the same information in a different type of chart showing daily cases. You can see, despite social distancing and stay-at-home orders, the number of cases continue to persistently rise both in New York City and in the United States. Finally, when you see mandatory face coverings occur in New York City, that's when you're seeing a steady decline of cases and you see the rest of the United States persistently elevated. So based on this data, it seems very likely that the face mask order did make a difference. And in fact, it seemed to make more of a difference potentially than social distancing orders and stay at home orders. Of course, it's possible that when that mandatory face mask order was given, people in general realized that, wow, this is a big deal. And maybe they're just being extra cautious with social distancing, being extra cautious with the hygiene and just not going out and interacting as much. So that sort of surrogate effect may have played a role as well. Hard to know. Now, despite the lack of definitive data, I would argue we have enough data to make us optimistic that mask wearing does help and it comes with very little downside. And of course, it's gonna be a finite period of time where we're doing this, so why not? Why not just wear the mask and suck it up for now? Now, I get it, nobody likes to wear a mask. I mean, I hate wearing masks. I don't like the way I breathe in it. Um, it's uncomfortable, you know, you can't really recognize people. There's, you know, no social cues. And of course, nobody wants to wear them. But we do it because it's probably the one thing that we can all do to contribute to the slowing of this thing. And finally, there is this narrative being pushed that masks may actually cause harm. Now, first of all, there's no data to suggest that. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, you may have a sensation of shortness of breath, but unless you have like severe underlying lung disease or you're acquiring oxygen, wearing a mask is not gonna reduce your oxygenation. You're not gonna build up with carbon dioxide. You're not gonna increase your risk for pneumonia or fungal infections, all these things. There's absolutely no data to suggest this. Let's just look at the hospitals, right? Now, we've been wearing masks in the hospitals forever. And that's because we know that wearing a mask reduces the risk of us transmitting our germs to our patients. We're wearing masks throughout the whole day. Last I heard, there was no healthcare workers or doctors or anybody indicating that they're getting sick from wearing their masks in hundreds of years. So the notion that masks are harmful is bogus. Certainly, if you were gonna go under the knife for a surgery, you would want your surgeon to wear a mask, am I right? So why should we ask less of anybody else in the public during a pandemic if it means reducing the risk of transmission and the health of other people? In the end, we can have this debate ongoing. Will we ever have a 100% answer? No, but come on, what is the big deal? If there's even a small chance we can reduce the rate of infection and the spread of this disease. So if you're in a surging region right now, the mitigation measures that we know work, hand washing, you know, social distancing, and wearing a mask. So please, please, just for now, just do it.